Human Resources, HR. It's kind of a drag, right? Well, it doesn't have to be. In fact, it can be really fun and help you grow your company. And today I talk with the president of an 85 person landscaping company about how with the help of his full-time in-house HR director, they've created a culture coin game where, where they give out like poker chips to their employees who are living their vision, mission, and core values, and why this has been a key to their growth. We weren't getting the leads that I knew we could. We weren't getting the right leads. What started happening is that our our leads are more qualified. Our sales have probably gone up by about 10 to 15% a year. We're going to increase our sales volume by a million dollars in a year. You know, I used to think things like company culture and core values was kind of BS consultant speak, right? And then once I actually finally invested time and implemented and believed it and and made it something meaningful at my company, my company really started to grow and I started to really retain and attract great people at my marketing agency. And I love today's interview because Wade Martin, who's the president of Martin Landscape Inc. in Beaufort, South Carolina, talks about how when he finally invested in his culture, his core values, vision, and mission, and then created this fun game, that's one of the keys to his success. So we have a lot to learn from Wade in today's interview. Before we dive into this episode, I want to invite you to our live landscape recruiting virtual workshop on Thursday, December 16th. Check it out at ramblinjackson.com slash events. Hey everyone, welcome to the Landscaper's Guide to Modern Sales and Marketing. My name is Jack Jostis, and today I have an exciting guest. We have Wade Martin from Martin Landscape, Inc. in Beaufort, South Carolina. He's been in business since 2004, and I'm going to talk with him today about managing your team and maintaining a strong employee culture. So, Wade, thanks so much for coming today. Tell us a little bit about uh, Martin Landscape. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. For, thanks for having me on the show. I'm really excited to uh, share some successes and some failures, um, both of them to, to help other people out in our industry. Um, started in 2004 with a pickup truck and a push mower. We, uh, we are currently um, employing about 75 to 80 uh, team members, um, and that is in our South Carolina and our Georgia branch. And the services that we provide are uh, our pro- we call them profit centers. Um, they are commercial lawn maintenance, residential and commercial enhancements, landscape construction, commercial and residential, and we also do street sweeping. So that's just a little bit about our company. Well, that's interesting about street sweeping. How did how did that become part of the mix? Yeah, we like to self perform everything. And uh, one thing that we noticed when we were hiring our subcontractors to do the work, they were saying they were doing properties and they actually weren't doing it. So we weren't being fair to ourselves or our client. Um, We wanted to get the best bang. Our clients get the best bang for their buck. And uh, we decided to go in-house and try it. And it's got a nice profit margin. And it's a, uh, you know, we're already on the property. So it really benefits our maintenance uh, teams out in the field. So we decided to do it in-house and and saved a lot of money doing it. And it's just another thing that we offer for our client. Awesome. And uh, tell me a little bit, you, you mentioned that you're going to share some wins and also some failures. You know, a lot of times people see somebody who's been in business for 16, 17 years, they've got 75 to 85 employees and like, oh, this guy has it made. It must be easy. Um, what are maybe, may, what are some maybe challenges or failures or things that you you've learned from along the way of growing to this point of having this many people on your team? Sure. Well, Jack, I'm going to start with um, something that every landscape contractor I talk to, uh, my peers, my mentors, um, people that are smaller than I am, larger than I am, everybody's having the same problem and it's labor. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, my first question to them, how often are you working on labor? If that's your number one problem, all you do is have an application on your website. Um, Why don't you have something on your truck that says now hiring? Why don't you have a banner out in front of your office now hiring. Why is your team's not talking about it? Um, so I'm starting at the, the biggest thing there is, um, you know, labor, the labor challenges today. Um, we have a full-time HR director. We decided to hire her about a year ago. Um, 
it was the biggest thing that we've done for this company to help the growth. Um, you know, we were the same way. We were those people. We were complaining of the labor. And it's like a light bulb went off and I said, how often are we working on labor? And I, I sat down and really did the math on it. And it was very little, the least amount of time on our biggest issue. So I think that's a, a, a big piece of the, of the puzzle for most landscape contractors. Because I think getting the sales for 90% of the people, the sales are there. The people are, are you know out in their yards with COVID, things like that, wanting to redo things like that of that nature. And, uh, you know, the sales are there. I, I think uh, you got to have the people, you got to have the team, you got to have that culture built up. And and so when you say, you know, working on labor and how, you know, what does that mean? Like, how are you actually working on it now? So, so you've Absolutely. hired, you've hired a full-time in-house HR director. What are, what are they doing? And what are you doing now that that's working that you weren't doing before? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the HR director, her full-time job, Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week, is retention, retaining who we have, because it's a lot cheaper to keep who you have. You've already trained these men and women. Um, so retention is a big one. And I'll mm-hmm. give you some ideas of what she does to do that and help out, because our whole team does it. Just because she's the HR director, our whole team is working on how to get better and what to do. Mm. Um yeah. And then the other thing is new hires. As we're doing departments, she's meeting with department heads and asking what their needs are. Um, you know, do the do the numbers make out where you, you need four men instead of six men on a team? And we're talking about that. All-stars, they want to work with all-stars. They don't want to work with the guy that's, that's dragging on a crew or things like that. All-stars want to work with all-stars. Um, but you know, the retention portion of it, going back to that, of what she does, um, we celebrate milestones. Um, we celebrate birthdays. Um, they get a birthday bag. It's got a Martin Landscape water bottle and a bag of cookies or some candy. I know it's a simple gesture, but let people know you appreciate them. But we don't just celebrate birthdays. We celebrate, hey, you've been here for, you know, 12 months. You've been here for a year. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Take your hand. As the owner of the company, I'll give them a phone call. I'll go see them on the job site. Hey, I'm really proud you made it a year. We look forward to having you many more years to come. Um, you know, that's a big thing. Getting our uh, evaluations on time. You know, mm. we do a mid-year eval and we do an end-of-the-year eval. Everybody on our team, there's no questions asked of when are you going to sit down and talk to me. They know when we get hired, um, when they get hired. Our onboarding process is very detailed. Our HR director goes through everything that the company offers, all the benefits, all the perks of working here, things like that. One big thing that we have, Jack, is uh, this idea came to me. I'm very creative. I like to think outside the box. We have poker chips. We call them culture coins. They have our core values on them, uh, passion, pride, teamwork, and relationships. These culture coins have a dollar value on them. $5, $10, and $20. At the end of every month, we make it a game. The teams turn them in. We have flat screen TVs at both of our branches on the wall. And we have, you know, we have a game. We see who's leading with the culture coins. They can get these coins for safety. They can get these coins for production. Um, They can do these, get these coins for being a good Samaritan, you know, just being a good person, doing something for somebody else. Um, They can get, you know, get awarded. In, in a good way. I keep some in my truck as well. And I hand them out when I, when I see things going well, I think nine times out of 10, people see the things, the bad things in a person. We try to see the good um, and go from there. So one of the things they can buy with the culture coins is they can buy Martin landscape swag. They can buy leather boots. They can buy khaki pants. They can buy a day off, a paid day off. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm a big, I'm an avid fisherman. If they want to go fishing with me. They can do it. Um, they can buy lunch for their team. They can be, they can buy a dinner with the owner, which is myself. They, you know, there's just a bunch of things. So we got creative on that. And we asked them, Hey, what are t- some of the things that, that you guys want? You girls want, because it's not about us. It's about them at the end of the day. What do they want? Um, and, and they said a paid day off, um, things like that. So we added it. We didn't necessarily have that on there, but I said, Hey, let's do it. They've earned it. So I think you have to reward people on, you know, what they earn. But the culture coins is a, it's a a huge hit of our company. Um, 
it wasn't at first, but the more we talk about it, the more we're handing those chips out. You'll see these guys at the end of the day before they go home looking at the board. Oh, man, you're leading. You know, you've got this, you've got that. And I think internally, you kind of learn a lot about a person. So when you see a team leader, he takes those chips and he buys lunch for his team. It really shows that he cares about not just himself, but everybody on that team. Um, it just you, you learn from other people as well. So the culture coin has been a huge, huge hit here. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think you you really hit on something that I've learned in growing and managing a team is the importance of praise and and um, finding something they've done right is something I learned from uh, the book, One Minute Manager. Have you ever read that book? I have read that book. That's a great book. Yeah, it's a really great book. And uh, at, at my company, we have a beef jerky club. And so part of our deal, one of the problems in my industry in the digital marketing industry is marketers are flaky and late and they don't they don't do what they say they're going to do. So we have an on-time guarantee. And if we're late, we have to send people beef jerky in the mail. And it's kind of fun. I love beef jerky. Uh, but we, we have a, a weekly nomination and anyone in our company can nominate other people. And then we have a monthly winner and then a quarterly winner. And uh, we have a bingo board. And, and if you win the bingo board, if you get your, your prizes in a row, you can win the, the, the big prize this year is a Peloton. So it's a big prize. Uh, yeah, it's a big yeah. prize, but uh, it also makes it really fun. And what are, so what are some of the results that you've seen? You know, I think um, I'm doing something like this and I'm, I'm seeing the, the results of it. Maybe somebody who's listening or watching, who's like, Oh, that sounds like a waste of time, you know, culture of coins. What, what, how is this actually translated into results at, at the yeah, company? So we measure everything. So you, you heard me talk about how we put it on the big screen and we keep track of it. So do our teams in the field. They're keeping track of it. They're looking at that big screen. They're high mm -hmm. five. So it's bringing the morale up. The guys are happy. It's a game. You've got to make it a game. Let's face it. At the end of the day, we see the people we work with more than we see our own families. You know, you've got to make it a game. Make them high five their, their team members, their teammates. Make them get excited about it. It helps the morale. It helps the whole morale of the company when you're when you're doing things like that. Um, so we see that happening. Um, you know, we'll hire a team member's friend. We do a one, two, three program. Mm -hmm. So if they uh, they get hired on after 30, if they make it 30 days, they get $100. They make it six months, they get $200. They make it a year, they get $300. You know, that's $600 per team member they bring on. Do you I think they're going to bring, you know, are they going to bring on an all-star? Are they going to bring somebody that's really not going to work? They're going to bring an all-star because they want that $600. Um, you know, the retention is the big thing, though, being able to drive that morale up. You want your people happy. If your people are happy, they're going to stay with you and they're going to give you ideas that they want to see happen as well. So with 75 to 85 employees, you know, that's a lot of birthdays. That's a lot of one year milestones, two year milestones, three year milestones and, and so on. How do you keep track of that? Are you using an HR software now or do you have a massive spreadsheet? Is it a whiteboard at Wade's yep. house? What, what are you using? No, our HR director uh, keeps track of all of that. Um, you know, we run Microsoft 365. We run that, but we also have a, a CRM system. We have a, a system just for our industry that we use that we really, really like. And we also, she has a, uh, just an HR program that she runs as well. Good. And, and um, you know, one of the things that you mentioned was that you call each division a profit center and that you also mentioned that one of your core values is relationships. Have you ever, have you ever um, had team members struggle with uh, thinking of their division as a profit center and the relationship, I to me, it's really clear that they go hand in hand. If we're not profiting, we can't have the relationship. And if we don't have a good relationship, we can't profit. But that's something that I've struggled with with uh, um, with some some team members is 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 helping them understand both. So, have you ever had that challenge with people where they're maybe turned off by the idea of it being a profit center? Absolutely. Uh, we do. So the only people we talk to about the profit center 
would be uh-huh. our upper management, the, the department heads. And just to give you a little background of what we do with our debar- department heads, once a month, we sit down and we go over just their p and for just their department. Our landscape software helps us do that. So they have a dashboard and we can, you know, just if it's someone who's in charge of street sweeping, they're only looking at the p and for the street sweeping division. We show them their goals. Um, and, and then if they've hit their goal or not hit their goal, um, if they hit their goal and they go above it, they get profit sharing. So that's why we call it a profit center. Um, and it encourages them. They want to do more. Um, take our irrigation department, for instance. Um, we go over the p l just for that department. And then once a month, our controller, we have a full-time controller. We'll sit down with the controller and we'll go over the whole company for the month and we'll look at it and we share our numbers. People tell me I'm crazy. Oh, you share your numbers. You do this, you do that. The people want to, you know, leaders want to lead. They want to keep going. They want to keep going forward. Why not show them the road? You know, it's like a GPS system. If you're going on vacation and you have no, you know where you're going, but you don't know how to get there. Well, it's the same thing with running a business. We've got to have some type of direction. So we feel like showing, sharing the PL, talking about the profit centers, being hot, honest, open, and transparent. You know, we feel like that's what's really a, a big contributor to our success. And, and when you're creating goals, how do you, how do you create goals for your profit centers with those department heads? Talk to me about what's that process like? Sure. So like I told you before, we measure everything we do. So we know the gross margins that we need to hit. Um, we know what our SGNA is, our, our department heads, they understand, um, they understand that there's some things they can't control and then there's some things they can control. So they're, you know, we, we do a deep, a deep dive into the PL. So they really understand it. They know where things go. Um, so, so that helps a, a lot having, having people on your team that really realize it and understand. Great. Great. I love it. And uh, so one of the things I noticed on your, on your website is that, you can click a button and there's a Spanish version of the whole website. So talk to me a little bit. Why do you do that? And who, sure. who's reading it? And what are, what are some of the results of that? Sure. So we have some current team members that actually brought it to my attention and they said, Hey, we were on there. Well, they're, they're telling my translator, we have a few translators <laughs> on staff. Yeah. They're uh, they were talking and they came to me about three of them came to me and the translator came to me and says, Hey, you're wanting to teach this and train this, but the guy's, they said all they can do is look at the pictures on your website. And we just started laughing. I was like, well, what do they want me to do? And they said, hey, man, convert it all to Spanish. And I said, hey, so a light bulb went off. And I said, hey, great idea, guys. We're going to do that. Because <laughs> they were referring people to look at our website, but they didn't understand where the application was. They, you know, they click on it. The application was just English. And I says, man, we're leaving these guys out, guys and girls. We're leaving them out. So an actual current team member brought that to our attention. Oh. We changed it immediately. I mean, it was it was something that had to be done. We changed it immediately. They love it. Catering to our catering to our team members, giving them what they want. We we like to take advice from them. They're our frontline workers. Without yeah. them, <clears throat> and and so how does that how does that help them do their job better? And is is anyone reading it? Absolutely. Um, so just so you know, when our teams roll out in the morning, we talk about our core values daily. We mm. talk about our mission and our vision. Um, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you will see I, I posted things, but we wrap our doors at both of our offices. We have the mission and vision on one side and we have the core values on the other. I might randomly just go up to somebody. Hey, do you know the mission? And they just spurt it right out. English or Spanish. I'll bring my translator with me. He says, yes, he got it. And we'll flip nice. them and that's where the culture coin comes in and we'll flip them a culture coin. Um, core values. You could come to both of our branches right now today. I wouldn't tell them you'd come and be coming. And I would, I would honestly say, okay, ask them the core values. Everybody in the company will know the four core values. We talk about it from the time we hire you on onboarding every day um, because we built this company on those core values and we want to, we want to continue to use them. Yeah. I found that, that creating those core values was something that I always put off. I always thought that it was something that was kind of a bunch of bull you know, that, you know, I've got real work to do. And then, and then once I actually did that and started hiring um, and managing and recruiting people, and then 
living those core values, that's when our, our, our company really took off. I learned a lot about that from the book Traction. Is that, it sounds like, have you read that book or where did you learn all about um, some of the ways you're leading your company? So this is kind of kind of lead us into a, a different subject, but I've got to give credit to the consultants that I hired in the past. Um, I took on my first consultant. Oh, I was probably in business for, let's see here, 10 years before I even hired a consultant because I thought it was crazy. I thought it was a waste of money. Um, but I went to an event. I loved it. I said, man, I, this, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I, I took all the advice and I started running with it and I saw things start to work. And, you know, you, you preach it, you know, you, you can't preach something if you don't follow it. You've got to follow these things. And uh, I, I thought he was crazy. I was like, no, core values. Come on, man. That's, that's, that's silly. But if you think about it, everybody's core value is going to be different at every company they work at. Um, some may be very similar, things like that, but uh, it's just, it's important. But I give my credit to the consultants that really helped me in my career. And we really started seeing growth after we hired them and started going forward. So I don't want to take, I don't want to take any credit there. Those guys really helped me, but I had to put the work in. So the only credit I'll give myself is you've got to put the work in. If they tell you to do something, do the work that they say to do and go forward. And they've already been there and done it. Don't make the mistakes of, you know, going through it on your own. I've made so many mistakes, you know, before I had them, people have already made these mistakes. Find a mentor, you know, find that person that you can ask those questions. It's been down this road and they've done it. It's so much easier. I mean, I call guys that are larger companies than me and I'll just, I'll ask them or I'll send them an email and say, Hey, I'm having this issue. What would you do? If you get great response. Most guys in our industry, we, we stick together. We really do. Cause we want everybody to, to succeed. That's, you know, and that's one of the reasons I love the green industry is it's been the most welcoming and supportive industry I've ever experienced. And, and the way that people help each other in the industry, uh, is, is just really remarkable. Um, so tell it, tell us a little bit, what is the vision of your company? So you you've got 75 to 85 employees. Um, does that change seasonally or, uh, is do you do you work yeah. full, full year round or what what's that like so we're very fortunate we have warm weather uh year round it does get mm -hmm. cold we do have a winter but we don't have snow occasionally we'll have a, a couple of days of snow every every few years but we don't get snow here um we're very fortunate in that aspect where we stay busy year round so we'll keep those 75 85 uh, team members full time year round mm -hmm. the hours may scale back a little bit on our lawn maintenance division but we do seasonal color. We do pine straw applications, things like that, that will keep them, keep them busy. Um, well, Hey, thanks so much for coming onto the show. And uh, Wade, you mentioned um, people can, you know, how can we connect with you? Uh, you know, so if, you know, you had mentioned sometimes you email people, is that okay if people email you or should we connect with you on LinkedIn for people listening who, who are inspired by what you had to say that want to network with you? Where can we, where can we connect? Yeah, absolutely. Um, link, my email stays full and I've got that 10 and two rule. So uh, LinkedIn is the best way to get me. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, they can connect with me, send me a message. And uh, I can kind of look at their profile as well. And uh, I would love to do that. Um, Instagram, our marketing director runs our Instagram page. Stay up to date with us. Facebook, look at our Facebook, Instagram, come to my LinkedIn, go to our company mm -hmm. LinkedIn, go to our company website as well and, and look around. But um, the best way to communicate with me is LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying LinkedIn more and more every day. Um, I've actually removed Facebook and Instagram from my phone. We still use it for our company. And one right. thing I wanted to say as we're leaving another um, thing that you're doing that I recommend is having a marketing director or a marketing coordinator, somebody in house manage right. your social media, because they're going to be on the job site. They're going to be at that company huddle in the morning. They're going to, they're going to just understand what's going on. I, I don't think you can outsource social media for a landscape company. And when I see people doing it, it's really obvious. Like yep. your, your website hosting company probably has no idea what an HOA is. And right. you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yep. there's no way yep. that they're going to, they're going to market what you're doing in, in any kind of good way. So you're doing a lot. That's great. And, um, Everyone check out Wade Martin on LinkedIn and uh, martinlandscape.net. Thank you, Wade.
Wade just shared a ton of value today and make sure you connect with him on LinkedIn. He's super active there. So am I. Search for me, Jack Justice. And hey, if you enjoyed today's video, click the like button, subscribe, click the bell icon. Make sure you get notified so that way every week when we post a new video, you get to see it. Hopefully you got some ideas today. I love those culture coins. And if you want to learn even more, join me for my virtual workshop, The Seven Keys to Landscape Recruiting in 2022 on Thursday, December 16th. It's a paid virtual workshop that you can't miss. Check it out at ramblinjackson.com events.